Hi guys, this is Steve Losh, and I'm doing another screencast about ClojureCraft, my framework for writing Minecraft bots in Clojure. So, um, today I'm going to show you a bot that takes advantage of something I just added, uh, loops. And so, loops are a way for your bot to look at the world and perform some actions every X number of milliseconds. Um, so before we get started on the actual bot, I'm going to fire up the uh, local server just so that it can get started in the background. Okay, um, so I've got a bot file just like I normally do. I'm uh, going to, you know, require the stuff I usually use. And uh, when I'm writing bots, I tend to work backwards. I start with the function that makes the bot <clears throat> and kind of figure out what I need from there. So let's take a look. Uh, our little make bot is going to follow my usual convention of taking a server and a username. It's going to connect to the server and then it's going to add an event handler for death um, because I figure most bots are going to need to, you know, when they're dead, respawn at least, maybe say a snarky message or something. Um, and then it's going to add a loop. And now this add loop function here, um, oh, sorry about that, uh, this add loop function is going to add a loop to our bot and it's going to use the follow function. Uh, basically what loops do is they consistently call a pure function uh, and they pass the bot as an argument and you, when you add a loop you can say how many milliseconds you want to wait in between each run and so for now we're just going to say a thousand milliseconds to wait for an entire second and they also take a loop ID which I won't go into right now but for now just assume that you need it and then my make function returns to the bot okay so the first thing we do is add a handler for death it's pretty simple we've seen event handlers before uh, all it's going to do is return two actions it's going to chat and say WTF mate, and it's also going to respawn the bot. So if the bot dies, it'll kind of complain and then respawn. So nothing special there. So what's uh, the, the entire point of the screencast is showing you the loop. So before we do that, um, I made a few helper functions. Um, basically, what we do in the loop is first we make sure that the bot actually has a location. Uh, when you first connect to it, the server, the bot won't have a location. It'll wait for the server to tell it where to connect. And so we kind of do a little null check here. Um, otherwise, you know, the logic inside these other functions gets hairy. Um, I'm toying with the idea of waiting to start loops until the bot actually begins to, uh, you know, gets a location, load some chunks, but um, I really don't know the best way to do that yet. So for now, I'm just null checking in the bot. So, um, what our bot's going to do is it's going to find the closest player, so the closest entity that's not a pig or a cow or something like that, it's going to find the closest player and move towards it. So, what we do is we find, we, um, we use a let statement, and first we find all the players in the bot's world. And to do that, we have this little helper function called find other players. So let's, let's take a look at that. Uh, where did you go? There it is. So, let's start at the inside. Basically what this is going to do is it's going to get all the entities in the bot's world. Um, entities is a map, so we're going to get all the values. Okay, all the values from the map. We don't care about the entity IDs right now. And we're going to filter those, and we're only going to take the ones that have a name. Uh, most mobs, or all mobs, all pigs, all spiders, all skeletons and such, won't have a name. Uh, the name will just be nil. The only things that will have names are other players, right? Um, so basically we filter the entity list and find all the entities with names. And then what we do is we remove the entity that has the same name as the bot, right? Because we don't want to follow ourselves. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, so what we do is we, you know, call the remove and we say, okay, we're going to remove all entities that have the... Uh, a name equal to the spot's name. So that's pretty simple. You can take a look at the code. Um, it'll be up on GitHub and Bit Bitbucket, so you can try it out for yourself, play around with it. So we got that. Um, so uh, the next thing we do, we've got our list of players that does not include the bot itself. So then what we do is we find the closest one. And so I made a little helper function called closest entity, and that takes the bot and the list of players. So if we take a look at this, um, the first thing we do is make sure that we have some entities, otherwise um, we'll get null pointer exceptions. Uh, so first we say when entities is a sequence, so there is something in it. 
what we do is we first sort them by distance. So we sort the entity list, um, and we have the ones with the least distance at the front of the list, and we just take the first one, right? I'll show you what these do in a second, but just for now, um, assume that the sort function returns the list of entities so that the closest entity is at the front of the list. And we just take the first one, obviously. So, um, what we do, uh, when we're sorting, we, we use this uh, comparison predicate here. We say that it's going to be less than, and we pass it the two distances. We say the distance uh, between the bot and it's the argument to the sort function, the two ar different arguments. Um, you can look at the docs for sort to see how this works. Uh, but the interesting part is this distance between helper function. Um, there's a lot of helper functions in here. I tend to try to make my functions as small as possible um, so that they're easier to understand, even if I only use them once or twice. Uh, it's just the way that I program, and I think it works pretty well for me. So let's take a look at distance between. So this distance between function is going to take, it's up here, it's going to take a bot and an entity. OK? Um, so what we do, we have the bot and the entity. Now we need to get the location objects out of each one. So the location object, you know, uh, each entity has a location object. The location object has the x, the y, the z coordinates, um, and a couple of other things, but we're just going to pull those locations out of the bot and out of the entity. So we have this other helper function called locs, and it just does, just very simple, um, pulls the location out of the uh, bot. So, you know, uh, the player attribute of the bot points to the entity of the bot, of the bot's player. Right? So we take the location out of that, and then we just take the location out of the entity. And these are both refs, so we need to dereference them here. Okay. So once we've got the two locations, the from and the two locations, so from is going to be the bot, because we're moving from the bot to the entity. Um, basically, all we do is take the difference right here of each coordinate, uh, take the absolute value, and add them. So, you know, if if our bot is 1 away from the entity in the x, 0 away in the y coordinate, and 2 away in the z, it's going to be 3, right? It doesn't matter if the coordinates are negative or positive uh, because of the absolute value method we're using here. So, okay. So this is just going to get us a very simple distance. Uh, you can probably do a better job at this than I did. Um, this is not my usual style of programming, so I'm sure uh, if someone wants to fork the code on GitHub and make this a little better, they can do that. Uh, but anyway, so we've got a very simplistic distance between method, right? And we're sorting by that. And we're going to take the first. So we're going to get the closest entity to the bot. Uh, the closest player entity, remember, because we've already filtered filtered out all the mobs, all the pigs, all the skeletons, etc. Right? So we're only doing players. So we've got the closest entity. Um, now, if we don't, if uh, our bot is the only one on the server, obviously there's not going to be a closest entity, so it's just going to return nil. Uh, so we do a little null check here. We say when there's a closest, then we're going to do something. Okay? So, uh, what we do, now, now we have the bot, and we have the closest entity to it. Now we need to figure out where we need to go to get closer to that bot, right? Because our, our bot is going to follow the closest entity to it. Um, so what I have is this extra little helper function called toward. And all, that can, all that's going to do is figure out how much we need to move in the x and how much we need to move in the z axes to get closer to the entity. Um, right now, we don't worry about the y axis because uh, that would involve jumping, and I don't want to make this too complicated. So um, basically, we, I have this extra helper function, once again, lots of helper functions, uh, towards single that just handles a single coordinate or a single axis. Right? So we say, you know, we need to move this amount in the x direction. So we're going to say towards single, and we're going to pass it the x coordinate of the bot, which is the from, right? Because bot is here, from is there, right? The x coordinate of the bot and the x coordinate of the entity that we're moving towards. And so towards single is the last helper function we're going to look at, I promise. And it's going to take uh, a single coordinate from and a single coordinate to. So if uh, my bot is standing at negative 64, and my entity that I want to move to is negative 60. It's going to take negative 64 and negative 60. And so basically all we do, the first thing we do, is check if the, the from coordinate is within two blocks of the to coordinate. Okay? Because um, if we're within two, two blocks of our destination, we'll say that's good enough. Uh, you could change this to one if you wanted to get a little bit closer. 
but for now we'll just use two. Um, and if that's the case, we don't need to move at all. We need to move zero blocks, okay? So the zero right there is if we're close enough. Now, if we're not close enough, we're gonna we're only gonna move one block at a time for now. And so we basically um, do a little bit of logic here to say if from is less than two, then we need to move in the positive direction. Otherwise, we need to move in the negative direction. So in our case, if we're negative 64 and 60, then from is gonna be less than two, and we're gonna move one. So negative 64 plus one is negative 63, right? And that's closer. Um, if, if we did it the opposite way, if we were at like 10 and 20, then we would need to move in the negative direction. Or, I'm sorry, if we were at 20 and 10, then we would ne need to move in the negative direction, right? Because we would get to 19 and that would be closer. Um, and in that case, from would be greater than 2 and we would move in the negative direction. Okay. So basically what this toward function does is it figures out if we need to move negative 1, 0, or 1 in the x axes and the y axes, right? Um, so down here, we destructure the result of that. So we say the variable x is whatever that returned in the in the map that was marked as x and z for z. And all we do is now we're going to return an action, a, sing a list of actions, sorry, a vector of actions, uh, a single action, and say move however much we were supposed to in the x direction, however much we were supposed to in the z direction, and don't worry about y for now. Okay? So that's our loop. Um, and we said we're going to call it every 1,000 milliseconds. So every 1,000 milliseconds, our bot is going to find all the players, find the closest player, and if one exists, figure out which way it needs to move to get closer to it, and do the action. So let's give this a try. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is actually open my Minecraft client and connect to the server. And let me set the time so we can see things. Uh, you'll notice I downloaded one of the Flatland maps from the Minecraft forums, just so that we don't have to worry about jumping over things to get to me. And down here I have a little scratch buffer. I'm going to say uh, use core. I'm just going to take the Minecraft local and disconnect from core. So let me evaluate that. And you can see over here it's compiling. It'll take a second. And the next thing I'm going to do is also include the uh, make follow bot function we made. So let's make that. And now I'm going to define a bot. Okay, it's going. Uh, we should be able to see that our bot joined the game. We're naming our bot Lemming just because he follows blindly. Um, and real quick, I'm going to switch over to my terminal and open up the swank window. And you should be able to see that every second it's performing a movement. I added, the, added a little debug information here in the uh, action performing method. Um, just so we could see for the screencast. And right now it's not moving at all, because our bot's pretty close to me. But if I move, every second our bot is going to try to move closer towards me, right? And you can see over here the movements are there, and no, oh, bot's has, bot has stopped moving. Now I'm going to, I'm going to move away, and our bot can't move very fast right now, right? Because it's only once every second. Um, I'm going to move away and I'm going to disconnect, and we should see that our bot no longer performs any movement actions, right? Because if our bot's looking for all the closest players and there's no other players on the server, your bot's not going to move, right? So let's go ahead, back to Vim, and disconnect our bot. And I'm going to make a quick edit so that instead of every second, it goes every 200 milliseconds. Okay, I'm going to evaluate that buffer to replace that. Um, I think I need to do... Sorry about this. Um, oh. I'm going to get back into the username space where I was before. Okay, Back into the username space. And I'm going to define the bot again. The bot is connected. <clears throat> and that's from the old bot. The bot's not doing anything right now because I'm not connected to the server, right? But as soon as I connect, the bot is immo immediately moving much faster towards me. Right? So now we've got a bot that follow us, follows us around. And uh, I'm sure you can see how useful this could be, you know. Um, you could combine event handlers with this so that you can say, you know, start following me and stop following me in chat messages um, and lots of other stuff. So even though it's kind of, it's a little bit buggy right now, occasionally the bot will um, get off a little bit, but <clears throat> I plan on fixing that in the f near future. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure you guys can clearly see the potential here.